This video details the installation of the NMS 043-MDM system. This video also talks about the other configurations of the NMS 043 and shows where they differ in the installation process. However, this video does not show how those systems are installed. Items which are needed to complete the installation but are not provided with the system include a Phillips screwdriver and channel lock or pipe wrench. Be aware the connection of the surge suppressor is 120 volt or a 220 volt power line and should be performed by a certified electrician. This video shows the mounting of the NMS 043 system on the TRP-19 pole. It can also be mounted on the TRP-20 pole as the mount positions shown here are the same. As you can see here we have already routed our cable of our CBL-203-20 preamplifier cable through the pole. We have also installed previously an ethernet cable as well as a power connection. Now this has been done so we don't have to make the connection within the pole itself. So first step is to get the rubber grommets and put them over the cables. In this step, we will be removing the backplate from the EPSO 43 so that we can mount the box to the pole. To do that, we will take our hex, 532nd hex bit on our screwdriver and remove the four screws which hold the backplate in place. And now we can remove the backplate. To do so, grab the shelves and lift the back plate out. This can be set aside until we are ready to reinsert the back plate into the, into the box when it is mounted on the pole. As you can see, we have taken the pipe fittings and the distribution plate and mounted them inside the EPSO 43. They're just sitting in place so they will fall out if you tip it. So be careful as you route the cables back through the holes. Once the cables are routed through the holes, Tighten the pipe fittings by hand until snug. Then use the channel lock or pipe wrench to tighten no more than one full turn. So we have been able to install the box on the pole. And for this part of the process, we will be using the 532nd screw bit again with the screws that we took out of the box earlier and replacing the back panel. It's recommended to route your CBL203-20 through the top hole and the power through the bottom hole keeping electrical separation between high voltage and low voltage lines. Now that we've installed the back plate and pulled the cables from the pole, we now need to route the cables that are bundled from the back plate through the top and the side channels on the door. These are for the LCD screen and the 831 sound level meter. We need the HDMI and a DC power cable through the top, a mini USB type B a 2.5 millimeter stereo jack and a DC power cable through the side channel. In this step of the process, we'll be installing the CBL203 through the upper 
and the side channels on the door, as well as connecting the ground cable to the upper left shelf screw using the Phillips screwdriver. Make sure the 5-pin switchcraft connector is positioned above the keyhole on the door where the 831 will be mounted. Make sure to connect the power connector to the power plug that's, that was previously installed. In this step, we will be mounting the screen to the door. You first need to make sure that you connect the HDMI and the power connection, which are present here. Then, align the slot with the screws and slide into position. In this step, we will be mounting the 831 to the door. In order to do this, we need to use the 831 distribution plate as well as your Phillips screwdriver. In this step, we will be placing the station PC on the second shelf and attaching the associated cables that are taped to the second shelf. As we look at the back, we can see that you need to connect the power connection, the Ethernet connection, two USB connections, and the HDMI. One of these USB connections comes from the dongle from the wireless keyboard and trackball. On the third shelf, these are auxiliary power lines for the SEN-031 weather sensor or other accessories. To install the batteries, you will need two BAT-017 12-volt, 21 amp-hour batteries. Note the single and the double spade terminals. A CBL-166 dual battery interconnect. Battery terminal covers. And the NMS-043 battery connection cable. To install the batteries, First, remove the tape from the power harness and place the two terminal battery on the left and the one terminal battery on the right. Note, the batteries are shipped charged. Exercise caution to not short across the terminals. Use the CBL-166 battery interconnect jumpers to connect the batteries in parallel. Route cables through the battery terminal covers prior to connection. Use the red CBL-166 jumper to connect the positive or red terminals of both batteries. Use the black CBL-166 jumper to connect the negative or black terminals of both batteries. Connect the NMS-043 battery connection cable to the left battery matching red to red and black to black. Once all connections have been made to the battery terminals, push the terminal covers into place to prevent accidental contact and short circuits. Connect the NMS-043 battery connection cable to the power harness.
Now we will install the battery charger. Prior to doing this, make sure the surge suppressor is connected to AC power. Now we will connect the battery charger to the NMS043 battery connection cable. Now we will install the MDM option of the NMS043 system. This is the COM RV50 gateway modem. Two omnidirectional antennas and a one and a half foot ethernet cable. We start by installing the omnidirectional antennas. First, remove the nut and washer from the antenna stud. Now, route the cable through the slit of the antenna bracket and tighten nut onto antenna stud. Now we will install the COM RV50 modem gateway. To do so, plug in the power connection, the ethernet cable that jumps down to the fit PC, and you need to connect both the cellular and the diversity antennas. We are now ready to power on the NMS 043 system. Make sure the surge suppressor is on, and then turn on the system switch.